Right, this is a video to show a very, very effective weaving pattern as a background that you can do yourself with very little tools, um, very not specialized tools. So here we go. Um, what I do first, I've printed out a page of squares. I've got a page of squares and I've got a tracing form on top. Um, and I have to trace these out. I cannot do it uh, freehand without getting confused. So um, what I do is I follow an over two, under two, over two, under two weaving pattern. So here we go. Um, to do that, I draw lines three blocks long and they stagger each one one more block. But they all three three blocks long. Okay, then then um, now <laughs> this is where I gotta think carefully. So then in the opposite direction, also lines three blocks long, starts there, up three, there, up three. It starts on one cuts off the other one up three there we go and of course if I had one here it would stop there too so you can see there's already the weaving pattern starting um, this one now will go the other way this way so there we go that one there that one there and there's the three blocks long line and there's that three blocks long line and that three blocks long line okay there we go so I can turn it again this way and proceed three long there we go three long and once you have established that pattern it's easy to just complete it all the way and just carry on with these lines so effectively you'll see what happens is that you have um, a line three blocks long it skips one line, skips one block, three blocks, it skips one block and goes on like that. And then you complete the three, three blocks there again. And this is how you draw these and so eventually you will have those those patterns very carefully done on the uh, sheet here so that you can simply copy it trace it onto the leather I have seen guys do this freehand I uh, Confess, I get confused if I try and do it freehand or if I don't focus at this point very carefully. So I have got to do this due diligence of making a tracing pattern for me. There is one other advantage to doing the tracing pattern and that is that you now can get uh, to use this as background in irregular shapes. And I'll show you that a bit later on. Now first finish this guy and then I'll come back. Okay, here yeah, I've already prepared a piece of um, mold cowhide. Um, I've put a bit of packing tape on the back because the mold leather tends to uh, stretch quite badly <coughs> and so 
I've got the outlines. I'm going to make a mouse pad. So um, now, as you can see, with that drawn there, I can easily decide how I'm going to have this um, pattern on there. If I'm going to have it absolutely along the straight lines, or whether I'm going to have it at an angle. Usually, I like it at an angle, but in this case, um, it will be fine. Um, straight the lines fit in so but I don't like to work right up to the edge so I am going to first mark the lines so my edges with this and I'm gonna cheat and make them as wide as that because I know they fit in okay so just gonna mark these lines here I'm going to do the background only within that outline so I leave the border clean. It'll allow me to stamp some sort of a border or just have a smooth border or I'll see later on what fancy fact I get. Okay, there we go. Border is marked and now I can put this on. and have it anywhere there and the area is small I can actually probably go at an angle although no let me keep straight let me keep it straight okay there we go and I'm gonna put a weight on this piece of paper so it can't move while I draw those lines and drawing those lines is just going to be one laborious project and I'm going to do line by line, line by line and then line by line um, exactly like that so I'll show you the first bit Now I don't have to focus too much because there's not the grid underneath that wants to confuse me. All I need to follow now is the blue lines I have on the tracing film. So, and there you'll see. Well, I don't know if you can see too carefully, but they are visible there. Um, this... Um, Mold leather is quite soft, so it doesn't show that eagerly. Okay, well, I'm going to do the road work, and then I'll come back. Right, I drew all the lines, and now it's a case of cutting them with a swivel knife. Um, I'm not cutting very deep, because the mold leather that I'm working on, it's a Sienna from Tandy, is not too thick so luckily now it goes fast because it's just pure straight lines and um, don't have to think just cut the lines And turn it around, cut the ones in the other direction, and I'll do that, then I'll be back. Right, all the soil knife cuts are done. I am, I've got this guy now on top of another piece of leather just for the tooling so that um, it uh, stretches more and doesn't work through on the hard surface. I am first going to work just with a 
textured beveler, a wide textured beveler. Okay, so what I'm going to do is all of these lines, just as the weave where one goes under the other, I'm going to affect that. Um, the magic happens later on, but this is just the hard work. So, every one of these. As it dips under the other weave. Gotta do them all. Now, I've done many weaves like this, but a friend of mine, Jose Torres, he said, well, he wants to spruce this up a bit and have it like a really a, a weave that he's seen that, that dips the whole corner of the ribbon underneath. And together we worked out this one. So as I said, this is still the hard work. The magic will happen in the next step. And I'll see you then. I have finished with a basic braid, if I can call it that. In other words, uh, every single one uh, you can see has now been beveled on this side and it dips under and bevels on that side. It goes under those two, so here it comes out, so it's beveled there and beveled there, and both directions that has been done. So every little long strip has been beveled on both short ends. So at this point, this is a basic weave that's done. But the um, enhancement that Jose uh, suggested I will show you is a very, very nice one um, that really makes this pop. And it's been a weave that's been attractive to me over a very long time. So, um, let me see. Where I'm going to put this, where I'm going to work now is <clears throat> I'm going to pick the short end of this thing and I'm going to home in on one of the corners. And the corner I'm homing in on is not the one where the other strip ducks underneath it, but where these two ribbons run next to each other and there's just a cut between them. That is the corner that I am now going to enhance, that particular corner. Okay, so let me show you how I do that. Um, Just get this whole thing situated in the middle again. Uh, all right, there we go. So I am working here with a 900 tool. It's a matting tool, no edged, no, no, um, it's just flat. So you just mat down the background with it. Make sure you haven't got a tooling halo or anything. That's the tool I'm going to use because it has a square corner and that's what I'm after a square corner alright so I'm gonna put that square corner in that corner that I showed you and I'm gonna lean this tool over very heavily so that it pushes down that corner. Let me show you. You see, I've now beveled both that corner edges, but this one was done with the corner 
of that matting tool in the middle there so this corner goes further down and you will see that that makes a very big difference on the overall pattern afterwards i'm going to take a photograph now and i will then take a photograph after i'm done and show you that but let me just show you one or two more of these hits and show you how it's done so i put it down square lean it over very much and tap in the corner very very aggressively so that that corner really goes down and you will see when you do all the corners like that it's the diagonally opposite corners on each ribbon that gets that treatment okay i have finished that whole special effect on the whole thing but i quickly want to show you the border i've chosen for this so the first step i do with the border here is to bevel just with the same beveler i used on the ends of all of those i use that beveler and i just bevel the inside of that line um, i've already done all four sides and now another tool simple tool that we all have in our toolboxes a veiner usually it's 407 that we all have going to use that for a very nice special 3d border so let me show you here i focus on the outside curve of this veiner in other words if i put it this way i hope you can see that outside curve is what I put next to the line that I've done um, in such a way and I'll show you the impression in a second close up but put it like that and I lean the tool over so that it fades into the project into the background and so let's see how close up we can go you can see there how that tool is situated so that it curves and I'm going to follow that line all the way so here we go if you have a curving line you change the direction of this tool as you go along but in this case I have a straight line so I'm going to always have this tool at the same and I like to do these stamps fairly close to each other so there is the effect of that quite quite pleasing as a border um, gives it a whole 3d effect and I'll put this on my blog so there'll be photographs as well where you can see the the completed project I hope this was um, informative and I hope it inspires you